Let's just cruise and we'll see what happens. Let's see if we can find any covers of these romance books with the picture of Sean Drover on the cover. <laughs> Where's the one with Fabio? See how, see how much he looks like Sean Drover. For those of you that don't know, Sean's our drummer. He's Canadian too. They expect a biography from somebody. One of the things that they think is going to be like either a tell-all, and, and that's not what I wanted. Right, you know, right, I didn't right. want like a gossip magazine yeah, because yeah. I wanted it to be about who I am, why I write the way I write. You know, what it's been like being a redheaded kid growing up in school, which was fucking hard, right? right, right. And then having my parents divorce and how I was always in different schools right, all the right, time. Right. So that really affected me a lot. Yeah. And then trying to get all that stuff in just a couple chapters, yeah. and then talk about it. what made me a musician and then what made me want to go into panic and then why did I go to Metallica right. and then how did I leave and it's just you gotta squeeze everything into this little space and so we figured that we would just talk. The drugs then the rock and roll and then the sex because you usually get buzzed and you go play yeah. and then you see the girl and then after you've Taking your emotional hostage victim and, and you've, you've got him in, in uh, whatever, yeah. um, then you, you go for more drugs. Right. right you know, because, yeah. uh, you know, once you've, you've uh, apprehended your, you know, your victim, you have to get him high. Right. Right. And yeah, would you like a drink? Would you like right. this? Would you like that? Right. And I, Good thing for me nowadays, you know, I'm happily married and yeah. my life has yeah. changed. But I remember those days, and it was it was so amazing. One time we were we were going across uh, state lines, and we had a band member at the time who met these twins in Oklahoma City, yeah. and they followed us yeah. into Florida, and the FBI followed us, and uh, that wasn't the only time something like that happened. So, um, yeah, stupid stuff happens when when you're in a band. Well, I think I'm going to skip the cooking section here. Ooh, watches. I like this. Now that's a timepiece. <laughs> I was a black sheep in the family because they were all Jehovah's Witnesses right. and I was a heavy metal guy. Yeah, right. That, that uh, was the worst thing that ever happened to me yeah, growing okay. up. It, okay. it just ruined, I mean, because you know, you can't have friends, you can't celebrate birthdays, right. you stand up and it's time to do the Pledge of Allegiance and you're standing there like this instead of like everybody else going, oh, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And people look at you and they're like, what the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. I needed to completely disconnect myself with God because what I was taught was that, you know, the hottest corner of hell was being kept hot for me because of the things I did <laughs> so but then when you go back to what happened once I became successful my mom used to you know this is back before ATM cards were really as, as, as popular as they were right. you know she would go and she'd pay for stuff and she'd have her checkbook open so that people could say our last name because it was a unique last name and and I was like mom you know but I, I felt cool you know she's yeah. passed away since then and and you know looking back at all the little things that she's done as a mom that showed me she finally accepted what I did and that I actually made her proud on top of the religious indoctrination the brainwashing from that cult it's it, it was amazing to me to see that she was willing to put a mother's love for her kid between her own love for this this you know right. belief that they have I look at it um, in, in several different ways. Um, because I have my own personal relationship with God, you know, I didn't realize that that was all I needed until I found out it was all I had. And then that's when my life started changing. So I kind of looked at it as like luck. Is it luck or is it me doing the right thing? Is it me treating people the way I want to be treated? Is it me, you know, acting as though I had something else that was greater than I was that I would try and, you know, make proud right, right. and because I didn't have a dad growing up and yeah. and I was pretty much just a loose cannon and and once I started trying to live my life a little differently things started to change right. dramatically anybody that wants to say you don't talk to me about that it's like you know don't don't start any shit about it because right. you know don't talk about the feuds don't, don't talk about right. stupidity you know, yeah, you're just okay. wasting your time. If you want to talk about stuff, man, I'll tell you the history. I'll tell you the fun part about it. I would admit my part in it that was bad. I'm not going to say anything about what they did that was bad. Right. It ain't my place. 
One of the songs that I listen to, believe it or not, before I go on stage, we have this uh, playlist in our, our uh, rehearsal room that we set up each night. And uh, Peter Gabriel, Big Time's one of them. Feels Just Like It Should by Jamiroquai is another song we listen to. Because it's such goofy stuff, you know. You, you hear it and it's like, you know, it gets you out of your game. Because if you're just going in there and you're like, you know, there's no dynamic. You go back out there and you're just another angry dog up on stage. But if you're hearing that kind of funky music, you know, it gets you in that kind of rhythm so that there's a difference with Megadeth music because we have that rhythm. It's not just straightforward, 4-4, four, four, just mind-boggling, you know, redundancy. You know, there's a, a flair to the music. A lot of that is because I grew up on, on punk rock and jazz music, but I also loved classical. And, and I really liked a lot of the Spanish sounding stuff. So, so that's one of the things that, that uh, has uh, influenced us a lot with, with our music. Another uh, thing I like to listen to is, is uh, like I said, punk rock. Just throw on some uh, fear or some sex pistols before we go on. That's really great to listen to too. But the stuff that I've been actually listening to a lot that will blow your mind is I've been listening to a lot of country music. Every time I get into my, my car, my wife and my daughter has been driving my car around and, and they put on the country channel. And you know, I gotta tell you, that, that shit ain't shit. <laughs> I think everything that's in the book is there because it's going to help people. Uh, I think uh, in a couple of uh, instances it's going to help people because you can see that you can play heavy metal and you can be a badass and, and you can also be a good guy.